Okay, let's take a look at the concept of integration or finding antiderivatives. Now, what we've done in the past is given a function, find its derivative. And the way we did that, draw one over here, uh, was if we had something like x to the fourth, if that was the original function, then its derivative would be 4x cubed. So you move the old exponent down in front and reduce the power by 1. So going back the other way now, if you knew that the derivative, in this case, is if you know that the derivative of x squared, then the question is, what was the original function? And all you have to do is just reverse the process that you just did. Rather than subtracting 1 and multiplying by the old exponent, in this case, you will add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. Then you have to add a plus c that we'll talk about here in a little bit. So this symbol looks like an s is an integral sign, and the way to say this is the antiderivative of x to the n with respect to x. So let's look at a couple of examples. So what I want to find is what is the antiderivative of x squared with respect to x? And it will turn out to be this. So applying the rule, if the old exponent was 2, I'm going to increase the power by 1, which will give me x cubed divided by the new exponent, which is 3, plus c, and I'm done. So if this is the derivative, this is the function that will give you that derivative. Well, let's apply the same thing over here. It's fairly easy to do. Again, the rule is increase the power by 1 and divide by the new exponent. So it was x to the fourth. I'll make it be x to the fifth divided by 5 plus c. Now you can always check this by taking the derivative of it. So if I were to take the derivative of this, I would have, uh, first of all, here is 1 fifth. Then the derivative of x to the fifth would be 5 times x to the fourth. And the derivative of a constant would be 0. Well, the 5's cancel out, and it leaves me with x to the fourth. So here is a little check that you can use to see whether you've got the right answer. So if you take the derivative of this, it should get you back to what you had to start with. So with that in mind, let's try a couple more examples. Okay, let's try some of these and just use that rule. So I want to find what is the antiderivative of x cubed with respect to x. Now again, the rule says increase the power by 1. So it was x cubed, so I'll make it be x to the fourth divided by 4 plus c, and I'm done. Um, now if you have a constant with it, you can do it a couple of different ways. We'll look at, uh, we'll work each one of these separately. So if you want to leave the constant inside the integral sign, this would simply be the constant 4. Now find the antiderivative of this using this new rule, which would be x to the 4th divided by 4, and then don't forget to attach a plus c. Now you're not quite finished here yet because the 4s will cancel out. This 4 cancels out this 4. And the final answer would be x to the 4th plus c. Now another way you can do this, whenever you have an integral sign, you can bring a constant outside the integral. So you can take this 4 and bring it outside the integral if you'd like. So if you did that, you would have 4 times the integral of x cubed dx. And if you did it this way, now the antiderivative, you've got the constant 4. The antiderivative of this would be x to the 4th divided by 4. And then don't forget to attach the plus c. Now the 4's still cancel out, and you wind up getting exactly the same answer. You'd get x to the 4th plus c. So this answer and this answer are the same. So just remember, on any integral, it's your choice about whether you leave the constant inside or bring it to the outside. Now the antiderivative of a constant uh, is just going to be, in this case, 3. The antiderivative would be 3x. And the reason is, if the, uh, suppose you had this, if the original function had been 3x, then its derivative would be 3. And going back the other way, if the derivative is 3, then the antiderivative, and if you want to, you can kind of, you just have to make it be 3x. So 3x plus 3. 
plus c. And if it helps, you can think of this as being x to the 0 power, because anything to the 0 power is 1. So when you add 1, x to the 0, add 1, you now have x to the first power divided by 1, and you'll come up with uh, 3x plus c. But in general, just think of it, if you've got a constant, its antiderivative would be uh, just add an x to it. So the antiderivative of 3x would be 3, or 3 would be 3x. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Now the question comes up sometimes, why do you need to add this c on the end of this? So let's look at three examples and you'll see why. I want to first of all find the derivative of all three of these. Now the derivative of this one, uh, y prime would be, the derivative would be 2x. The derivative of this one, y prime would be 2x, and remember the derivative of a constant is 0, so this is going to just be 0. Uh, the derivative of this one would also be 2x. The derivative of a constant, this constant right here, would be 0. So here are three different functions that differ only by a constant, and yet they all have exactly the same derivative. Now the problem is going back the other way, if you went back from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here, uh, the trouble is you're never sure whether it had a constant on it or not. This one did not have a constant. This one had a plus 4. This one had a minus 5. So you will never be sure whether it had one on there or not. So when you find the antiderivative, the best you can do going backwards is to change it into x squared and put a plus c to represent an arbitrary constant because maybe it had a number there, maybe it didn't. You don't know. So on all these problems, you'll have to attach a plus c to account for the fact that there may have been a arbitrary constant of some kind attached to the end of the original function. Okay, we'll continue on. Okay, now if you have a polynomial, let's take this, you can break it down into individual parts and do each one separately. So this would be the constant 2, and then the derivative of x squared would be x cubed divided by 3, minus the constant 4, the antiderivative of this, add 1 and divide by the new exponent, so it would be x squared divided by 2, and then finally you've got 5, and remember whenever you have a constant, the antiderivative of a constant it would just be 5x, and don't forget to attach a plus c on the end. So the final answer would look like this, it would be 2 thirds of x cubed minus, now here the 2 will go into the 4, and leave you with 2x squared plus 5x plus c, and you are done. So let's try another one. Now, sometimes you have to rewrite these things before you work on them. So what I'll have to do in this case is the following. Um, I need to distribute this. So I'm going to apply this times this, and this times this. So distribute the x squared first, so which gets you to x cubed plus 4x squared dx. So you have to, this is what I would call the rewrite phase, you have to rewrite it um, before you can apply the rule. Well now you can go ahead and apply the rule to this. This would be antiderivative of x cubed would be x to the fourth divided by 4 plus 4 times x cubed divided by 3 plus c. So the final answer would be um, 1 fourth of x to the fourth plus 4 thirds of x cubed plus c. And you would be finished. Okay, a little trick on this one. Uh, sometimes you've got to foil them out first. So think of this as being 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. Now go ahead and foil that, and you will get the antiderivative of, this would be 4x squared. Then you've got a 2x and a 2x, which would be plus 4x plus 1 dx. So this part right here is the part where you're rewriting it. 
So you got to rewrite it first. Now, find the antiderivative of that. Well, that's going to be 4. Then that's, the antiderivative of x squared would be x cubed divided by 3 plus 4 times x squared divided by 2 plus 1 times x would just be x, and then don't forget to attach a plus c. So the final answer would be 4 thirds of x cubed plus, and again, this goes into this, leaves you with a 2x squared plus x plus c, and you are finished. And let's take a look at one more example here. Um, how to work with uh, functions where you have the variable down in the denominator. Now the rule is you have to get it out of the denominator. So again, we'll try the rewrite phase first. So what I'll do is rewrite this as the antiderivative of x. And now this is x to the positive 3 in the bottom. So move it to the top make it be x to the negative 3. Now find the antiderivative of that and use the same rule you've been doing. You're going to add 1 to it. Well, it was negative 3, and you're going to add 1 to it. So now it's going to be x to the negative 2 divided by negative 2 plus c. So remember, you always divide by the new exponent. Now, if you wanted to, you could rewrite that as negative 1 half x to the negative 2 plus c. This would be a valid answer. Or if you wanted to, and a lot of times in the back of the book, if you've got an x to the negative 2, they'll bring it down at the bottom and make it be a negative 1 over 2x squared plus c. So you can either have the x in the top with a negative exponent or bring it back down here. And if you have one that looks like this, don't bring the whole thing up, just bring the x squared up. So this is going to be the antiderivative of 2 thirds, and I'll make this be x to the negative 2 dx. Now I'll find the antiderivative of that. I've got the constant 2 thirds times, I'll add 1 to this, so negative 2 plus 1 would be x to the negative 1 divided by negative 1 plus c which gives me, that would be a negative 2 thirds x to the negative 1 plus c. So there is the antiderivative. And again, if you want to, you can bring this x back to the bottom and make it be negative 2 over 3x plus c. So it's your choice whether you leave the x on the top or the bottom. So there's a few examples on basic integrals.